Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number, 187. And today, we have a special guest joining us from Tej Hanley headquarters to tell you about some cool stuff we're doing. Hey, hey Kelly, you are live are you? with the guys. How are you? Great. Hi, guys. How is everybody today? I think they just answered that they're doing well. So, uh, beginning of the vlog, I just want you to sort of take a little bit of time and uh, sort of explain some of the exciting stuff that we've got going on at Tiege Hanley in relation to Father's Day and giving and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, cool. So um, we just had like a really big uh, launch of what's called like our impact program. And uh, it's, it's just about having a cause and being cause integrated. And uh, why, do, why, do we know, why do we have that? Explain that. Well, here's the thing. We've always had a cause, um, and it's, it's really been driven by Rob in the beginning of uh, T. Shanley, and he, his concern about guys' skincare and guys' health, and it's related to the fact that his father died when he was 54 from, from melanoma. And so Rob, you know, you probably remember back in, in 15, 16, some of our conversations, Rob was pushing to have SPF in our products, and, um, and, and make sure our products help, you know, guys protect their skin against uh, the sun's harmful rays. Well, I, I didn't really think much about it, and I, I don't mean that negatively, you know, about Rob's cause and what, what was really important to Rob, but, um, you know, as we, and, and that very first year, um, you know, T. Hanley wrote a check to Skin Cancer Foundation so back in 2016, and we made a donation, and it wasn't something that was, you know, anything except just something we felt, the company felt like we should be doing. Um, and as we fast, fast forward a couple of years, we realized that, you know, preventing skin cancer is a big deal because last year more men than women got um, diagnosed with uh, melanoma, which is, or with, uh, yeah, with skin cancer. And um, it's one of the most, it is the most prevalent forms of cancer. So we just decided that, um, you know, that we will have a little bit more focus. We already had a focus on, on um, skin cancer from the beginning that we would make it, you know, more visible to our guys. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. All right, so explain the two programs we got going on. Well, when you, when you come to Teach Hanley and you, you check out, you have an op opportunity to donate, um, and this isn't, this isn't just a, you know, quote unquote program. This is from here to, um, you know, to, to, uh, um, to eternity. Um, we, we're going to have the opportunity to allow our guys to donate to, um, skin cancer foundation directly at checkout in their cart. Um, so we're, as a company, we're donating every month to skin cancer foundation. This is an opportunity for guys. If they, if they would like to make an ad. They can add a buck to their cart, um, so that's a big deal for us. And um, we, you know, we have at the very bottom of our, of our homepage, there's a, a little um, navigation bar for impact, and they can go and learn about skin cancer and why it's important to us. So that that's kind of you know step number one for us is that we launched it. Cool. And then uh, what about the uh, Dad's Day promo? Yeah, so we thought it'd be a great, you know, a great way to approach Dad Day, Dad Day, Father's Day to, you know, to tie in, um, you know, to tie in this this concept of impact. So really announcing impact. This this week's vlog, the one that we're talking about right now, is about announcing impact um, on our site. And in addition to that, we thought we would um, do a Father's Day promotion where um, we would match, do some matching, um, giving. To, um, uh, to 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 every, every time there was a donation during Father's Day during our Father's Day campaign, we would match dollar for dollar, um, and we're going to match dollar for dollar up to five thousand dollars. So we'd love to have you know to donate five thousand dollars and match um, our, our guys five thousand dollars, and to donate ten thousand dollars to Skin Cancer Foundation. Um, you know, we we set up this program, it's a five day program. And, uh, when's it yeah, start? So when's it start, Kelly? Starting immediately. So it's it's an opportunity for um, you know for for guys to donate for uh, for Father's Day. Awesome. One other thing that's super cool, Aaron, and um, I know you know this, but and I know you know um, it's an exciting thing for us. 
the Skin Cancer Foundation, which we, which we teach Hanley, um, joined a couple of years back, as I just described, they actually asked us if we would um, contribute and be, place an ad and have some contributing article in the Skin Cancer Foundation annual magazine. So this is, a, this is an organization that is a um, very reputable organization in New York that does, you know, tr- tries to promote skin cancer awareness and tries to po- pr- promote uh, research to prevent skin cancer. Our ad, Aaron, is in 25,000 copies of the skin, annual Skin Cancer Foundation's magazine, and it's, it's out now um, in dermatologists throughout the U.S., so there's a lot of people in the actual, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the industry that are either dermatologists or associated with Skin Cancer Foundation that have recognized T. Janley as a brand that's, that's interested to promote good skin health. And so they put us in this magazine and there'll be a lot of people that'll, that'll be able to come in through that, through that article and text um, uh, 707070 and go right to our landing page. So it's really exciting. It's, it's, it feels really good to be recognized by Skin Cancer Foundation for the work that we're doing. Good deal. So all that information will be linked down below. So guys, go check it out. Go donate if you want. If not, we totally get it. But that is the little bit that Tiege Hanley is doing to help you guys even more feel great and be healthy forever. Thanks, Kel. Awesome. Thanks, man. Have a good day. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate you supporting this cause. It, it is meaningful to us, and it's not it's not just a bunch of crap. We, you know, we're out there trying to help guys understand it's important to take care of your skin. Thanks, man. Have a good day, Aaron. Later. Bye. So T. Shanley is all about taking care of your skin, right? That is what we set out to do from day one. That is what we continue to do. One aspect of that is taking care of yourself and helping guys prevent skin cancer because skin cancer is on the rise. And so um, as a team, collectively, decided to make it more of a priority for us to give a little bit back and, and try and make it a little bit more, you know, just help guys more. And so this is a way for Teach Handley to do that and we are now inviting you if you guys want to. Not like must do, uh uh-uh. It's totally, totally optional. But we just wanted to let you know about it and uh, thanks Cal for the call, it was awesome. So now gentlemen, what I would like to do is dive into your business questions. Just a reminder, next week on Thursday, Kelly, myself, and Rob are going to be headed to New York. I'm going to be taking this bad boy with me, and I'm going to film the day. We're going to sit down and talk to um, a bunch of, I think, like editors and and people at different publications that deal with men. I don't know who is on the list um, 100% right now, but I know it's going to be a fun-filled day. I think we have like five or six meetings. They call them like desk side meetings or desktop meetings or something of that effect. But um, it's a, just an opportunity for us to talk and tell these publications and people about T. Shanley, what we do, who we are, and what we're all about. And so it's a PR type of move. We don't know what's going to come out of it, if anything is going to come out of it. But anytime you get the opportunity to talk about your business, I think it's definitely valuable. And, and with T. Shanley, we got to scream it from the rooftops if we ever expect to hit our goals, which are lofty. And, uh, but still obtainable, and so that's what's exciting. Something else that's exciting is some of these damn business questions. First one comes from Informed Outdoors. He says, I noticed that in the description of your video, both here and on Alpha M, you leave a transcript of the entire video. Is there a particular reason you do this? Does it help with SEO by sticking more searchable terms in the description? There's more, and we got... And also, thank you for inspiring me to start my own channel and create my own thing. You're a rock star. Good for you. That's what the blog blog is all about. So in terms of a description, I have been doing that for years because I have an assistant, Debbie. If you've ever wondered why, in my descriptions a lot of times, It'll, I'll be talking about myself in the third person. It's not that I'm that big of an egomaniac, it's that Debbie, my assistant, she will draft the whole thing for my website. Remember, I post all of my videos that I post on YouTube on IamAlphaM.com. And then for this vlog, we do the same thing. Debbie gets the, the vlog and she makes a transcript. I think it does help with SEO. I have talked to some YouTube people that say that it does. And so that's one of the, one of the upsides. Now, one of the downsides to doing that for my YouTube channel is that when I list all of the points, like six tips to, you know, use this camera, 
a lot of times what people will do is just go down there just to read the quick tips and then they'll X out of the video. And I've been testing the last few days, the last few videos, I've been testing what the average viewer duration is based on if I put that stuff down there or if I don't because the majority of YouTubers do not put that down in the description. And so it's uh, you know it's something that I've done for years. I don't know if it helps. I don't it doesn't hurt. Um, but you know it's something why not do it right because any type of searchable content I think is valuable in terms of how YouTube works I think they really focus on the tags that you put in at the bottom it'll ask for like tags I think that's really more impactful in terms of searchability and what they recommend for the algorithm but ultimately I got no idea because it's YouTube and no one does I would also like to give a big Alpha M knuckle bump to the Cavalier. He's a YouTube channel for those of you who don't know or haven't heard of him. He does men's style like hauls and reviews. None of his stuff is sponsored. Um, he does have like affiliate things and stuff like that. Like he does have the ability to make money off of it, which is not a bad thing. But he does, in my opinion, some of the best, most unbiased sort of reviews and analysis of everything from jeans to the best no show socks. He really has done an incredible job and he's been around for a while. I've known him for quite a few years, um, but you know, I've just been really impressed with his content and just wanted to say, check out the Cavalier. He watches this vlog, he's a cool dude, and uh, he's definitely putting out some incredible content for those of you out there that want like this type of stuff. He goes deep on these topics and really does an amazing job explaining it. And I think this year you're gonna see his growth start to really sort of like do that. And he is, he is definitely a gem on YouTube. Thanks, brother. All right, next up we have Nathan Welsh, who says, you said on other vlogs that you have left businesses in the past and given them to your business partners. I think you did this with the fashion anchor and the nutrition center you used to own. Um, what do you do with the shares of equity when you, when you leave? Did you sell the equity or um, to other investors? No, so <laughs> when I go, I go. And I'm not typically worried about like equity. Um, with the fashion anchor, that was a unique situation. Like he and I, this guy Brian and I, we kind of like invested some money, I invested some time, and it was a real business by the time I left. And so I had, I think I had over 50%, I don't even remember. I think I had over 50% ownership in that company. And at that point that I was just tired of like kind of dealing with it and I just, it wasn't, it just wasn't something I was passionate about. And so if I'm not passionate about it, I really don't want to do it. it it was something that I used to be very passionate about and I would have regretted if I didn't try it. And that's sort of one of my, my, my mantras that I always live by is it's better to try something and not dig it or try something and fail than to live with, with regret. And if I didn't try taking that business and just seeing what could happen, I would have regretted it. And you know, it is what it is. And so with Brian, I basically said, Hey, here's the business. I'm going to transfer the, the URL. I'm going to give you everything access to everything but um, I think I did like a small buyout it was like I think I mean it was small I think we negotiate I don't even think it was a negotiation I think it was like yo I'm not really into this I'm gonna give you the whole company I want something I think I don't remember exactly but I think it was like 25 grand hey pay me 25 grand over the course of the next like six months and we're square equity it's all yours but what happened was not that he ended up starting to sell them, generating revenue, but then he found out he had a problem with the manufacturer of the, the fashion anchors. And so he had to shut down operations for like six months while he worked on trying to get a resolution for this. And so during this time, I actually, I felt bad. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Dude, we're square, good luck. I transferred over the domain because that was like kind of like the last thing that I was, um, that I was hanging on to until I got my, my money basically. And it was one of those things where, you know, that amount of money isn't going to change my life, but it could definitely impact his ability to grow his business. And so I just basically was like, all right, good luck. Here's the, here are the keys to the car and uh, Godspeed. And, uh, for me, I just walked away, but that's not typical. Um, other businesses I've had have failed, have, have been really bad, and so there is really nothing worth, worth saving or anything really of value. Every time I go, it's pretty much like, all right, that's it, or I own everything, and, and so when I, when I get out, it's super clean because 
you know, I'm just not going to do it anymore. All my equity, I have 100% of it, it's just done. You know, you got to you got to figure out if the if the juice is worth the squeeze is one of those sayings, right? And you got to figure out how much how much time, how much energy, how much effort like is it worth it? And for me, my time is better spent focusing on the things that I'm passionate about, focusing on the things that really kind of move the needle. I just wasn't passionate about them. And if I'm not passionate about something, I don't want to do it. I'm in a pretty amazing position right now where I have a lot of incredible people around me. I've got multiple businesses with multiple partners. Some are my own, some have partners. And it's just awesome. And so when I try something, I'm going to try it for a little bit. I'm going to see how it does. If it does well, then that's kind of incentive to keep going. But if it kind of just floats around and it's taking up more time, more energy, and you just have to think about it because, you know, that's the thing, like the business takeaway, if you've got something that's taking up a lot of resources, whether or not that's, that's financial resources, emotional resources, or just bandwidth resources in terms of your time, you got to figure out whether or not it's worth it because if it's really not worth your time and your time is better served doing these other things that are going to move the needle for you professionally or monetarily, then you got to go with that, right? And some things are a distraction and, and the businesses that I've gotten out of have just been like distractions. Could I make a little bit of money at it? Yes. Is it worth the effort, the aggravation, and even just thinking about it? And the answer for me, was no. And the last question comes from our friend Sammy GA. Sammy, good to see you. Thanks for being here, brother. He says, is being professional in interacting with clients and colleagues also as integral as actually selling products, services, etc.? Or can a business grow and stay open solely on how good the product output or okay, so so the question is do your people need to be good people and treat people with respect and 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 be good people or can you just have a business or a product that is so amazing that people don't care if your your company's run by a bunch of crap heads the answer is i don't know um i would say that it is important because one thing you got to you got to think about is the culture right it's all about the culture of the organization and the culture and the feelings that people have about working there that manifests in every aspect of your professional life it also impacts the way that you you know interact with your family and all that good stuff and so i would say that if you have a toxic corporate culture which that sounds like what this is it's going to be really difficult to ever scale or to ever grow or to ever really do anything amazing. Now, that being said, there are, I'm sure, I don't know any companies that have terrible companies, they're jerks or whatever they are, unprofessional, but they do really well because they've just got a kick-ass product. Eventually, somebody else is probably going to see that kick-ass product and decide that they think they can do it better than you. And at that point, I think you're going to see I don't know. I mean, this is such a tough question, but I would say you definitely need to make sure that the culture in your company, whether or not people are meeting deadlines, interacting with each other and being civil and friendly and really gelling as a community and organization, it's so important. And that's one of the things with T. Shanley and the reasons why we do these little trips and get together. It's about a family and building a community and just working together as a team. Because if you don't love going to work every day, or I should say this, if you don't enjoy going to work or enjoy the people you're working with or enjoy the atmosphere, it's going to be miserable. And you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be productive. You're going to be messing around all day. And you're probably going to be looking for another job because of how miserable it is. And so in my opinion, which take it for what it's worth, is you need to have a good solid corporate culture. You need to have good people that are professional, that are responsible, that are, that are good in terms of character. Because if your people have crappy character, why do you want them around anyway? Because they're just going to bring you down. You're not going to be strong if you've got a bunch of weak links, right? Think of it as a chain. You got a bunch of weak links, how strong is that chain? Exactly. If you've got two strong pieces of chain, but then one link that's really weak, how strong is that chain? Not very strong. If you've got a lot of strong links in that chain, the chain is strong and will hold. Gentlemen, that is the weirdest analogy I just came up with in the history of this vlog, but it still kind of makes sense. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. Down in the comments, if you've got a business question, we're not going to answer them next week, but you can leave it and we'll answer it the following week because the following week, I'm going to talk a little bit about something. <laughs> 
that uh, was a dream come true for me. And I just spit, sorry. A dream come true. And that was promoting Suit Supply, my favorite men's brand. Happened. I hung out with the owner. I'm going to tell you all about it. My God, mind blown. Guys, we love you more. There are double monk strap shoes, and we'll see you in New York.